Oh, good morning. Good to see everyone here. And uh, my name is uh, Abi Chang. That's my uh, Anishinaabe name. And my uh, Indian Affairs name is Barry Saracen. But my uh, Anishinaabe name, the real person who you see here, standing here, is my original name, which comes from the, the water spirits. And to explain a little bit what's going on here, this is our traditional grandfather drum. We call him the Michel Mr. Wagon. And we're the people from, everybody here know where the Ottawa River is? Yeah. Okay. So that's who we are. We are the uh, Kitchissippi in our language. That means the Ottawa River, the Kitchissippi. And we are the uh, Mamawanini, Anishinaabek, people of the Algonquin Territory, which is all of the area which now that they call Quebec. There's nine tribes in the Algonquin Nation, the Mamawanini, and we're the only ones that go up the river south into along the uh, Ottawa River. And there's a river that comes behind my, my home. And that's called the uh, Kenoje Sibi, the Pike River. Just to give you a, a bearing of where I live, where I come from, in the country that I belong to in both Quebec and Ontario, which is known to the Canadian people as the Mamawinini, Anishinaabek. And here are some of our, our group members. There's over 30 of us that began learning what you see here that came down. This drum here is a part of the drums that came down from the heavens. 500 years ago before any people come across the ocean to change our governments and our ceremonies and our way of life. In 1992, when they made the Constitution, are you aware of the Constitution here in Canada? Yeah. Okay. Back there, these drums here came from Kenora. That's where the first grandfather drum came down from the heavens and the grandmother drum because of the wars 500 years ago before anybody came here. We had our own nation, our own government, and we still hold that today. And there was a, an elder that came here in 82 with his drums, and he ex explained to Pierre Trudeau because he wasn't understanding, and the Canadian public wasn't understanding who we are, why we have rights. Pierre says to the elders at Constant, why do you have rights? Why do you have rights to hunt, fish, and trap? Why do you have rights to take resources from the land? And they simply says that these drums came down 500 years ago. They're the first peace treaties amongst the first peoples that were here that were warring against the Anishinaabe people, the Iroquois were at war with them and also in Kenora area the Anishinaabe people were at war with the, South, with the Dakota people so these drums here are what they call peace drums 
And it was the first peace treaty between us and the Creator, God, who gave us these instructions, the original instructions, how to take care of the land, how to take care of the water, how to take care of the resources, how to renew them. So I understand that a lot of you people come from different countries, which I'm glad to see. I'm glad that you are here this morning to witness again what I'm talking about is the constitutional. In the constitution here, Pierre Trudeau sat down 35 years ago when they created the constitution. And he asked the elders with these drums who sat there. And they said, well, in the morning, Pierre, you come here, sit down at the drum with us here, and we're going to explain everything to you, why we have rights. So after that, Pierre did understand why we have rights to hunt, fish, and trap. But in 1982, when they signed the Constitution, Pierre got up and he says, well, we only can recognize you as existing people, existing governments. And that's the way it is in the Constitution. 35 years ago, that we are only existing. I was listening to an elder there last week, and he says, you know, existing is like putting our life here on a chalkboard. So the way they operate in the parliament, if you see them on there, they have opposition, they have government on one side in the parliament. So they're just really talking about our minds that's all that chalkboard is, he says. You are just talking about us as in our minds. You can do whatever you want with us. But in reality, they're not recognizing. Here, my body, the body of the grandfather, the body of the grandmother drums. So, they said, and that's what you did. You put our rights on a chalkboard so you can decide. We have existing rights to our land. We have ex existing rights to hunt, trap, and fish, and to renew our resources. So this is what these drums, the grandfather drum, <clears throat> came down under the direction of the creator, God. He brought these Thunderbird drums. So you see those flags on there? They have the flags of the rainbow. And what does the rainbow mean to the people? The rainbow means that the creator promises that he will never flood the earth. He will never destroy it unless we break the rules of not renewing those resources. So he says that God made us to be just like him. So he did all these ceremonies here and he showed us. Nana Bojo. He's laying down right now. Do you know where Thunder Bay is? There's a big island there and the man lays down there. His name is Nana Boju. He was the one that instructed us, us how to make peace. So that's why we have no war. No more war after 500 years. So that's what we're doing and come to share what to use our ways, our original ways, and our language, Anishinaabe uh, And my wife here, Jessie Ann, she's from the great nation of the seven Anishinaabe people that warred against the Iroquois and the Sioux people who were trying to take our lands in the history. So these are peace drums that come down for everybody. So that's what we're trying to explain here. And Scott had asked me to come in and uh, say a few words about that. Smigwet Scott.
Let's give him a round of applause, Scott. <laughs> He went through quite an effort to get us all here. We have Dustin in the white here. He's the original Algonquin member of our nation. Dustin Kamanda. <laughs> and we have Larry McDermott. He's from the Algonquin Nation, just south of here in Perth area. <laughs> I owe a lot of gratitude for to Larry, and he's helping me in a lot of things that we're doing here. We created the uh, Algonquin Abimi Aki, which are the grandfathers in our community where I come from, Pukwaknakan. Pukwaknakan is our community just an hour and a half down the Ottawa River, south in Pembroke. And we're the only Algonquin recognized band now since the uh, they created Indian Affairs. <laughs> and we have our son, my son here, Luke. He's very fluent in the language. He lived with Jessie Ann and her parents comes from James Bay up in Kasichuan, which is further north about, you could fly here in a couple hours, but that's where she is in, the, in her family and Luke. And the language is similar to Algonquin. And uh, he has a big responsibility to look after what we're doing here, to take care of all of the land, take care of all of the animals, take care of all of the fish, and all of the resources, the minerals, and the land. And we have another good friend of mine here, um, Greg Mikas. He's from way up in uh, Ojibwe territory, OJ Cree territory, Sandy Lake, is that right? Sandy Lake, but he resides here working in the justice systems. So this is Greg Mikas, he's very fluent in his language as well. <laughs> so, just to get a concept of who we are as a uh, the original people from this territory that you're looking and witnessing. These types of drums here have been underground, like I said, for 500 years and up to 1982 when the elders came from Kenora and Alex Skeed was there. And after he passed away, he gave me a vision of this drum, which I carry here, the grandfather. And another elder, his name is Jim Windigo. His Anishinaabe name is uh, Mishkanagat, which means the, he's the, the horse rider. And he talked to me a lot about who we are, especially uh, like in the Algonquins and Pukwaknakan. We're in a land claim right now, and there's lots of animosity and separation there because the traditional people hold a title to the land and they hold a title to our rights. It's not the chief and council that hold those titles. It's the traditional people that hold those titles to the land. And I asked uh, the elder Jim, who's passed on now, he, he took us over to the Ottawa River an hour and a half up in Chalk River. There's a big rock up there. It's called Eagle Rock. And we did a ceremony there. And six spirits came out of that rock. One of them was... If you go to these rocks, they have a Thunderbird pictograph on them. And that's the one that brought down these drums. And the other five spirits that came out of that rock at the river was the sturgeon spirit. And the wolf, the white wolf clan. That's what, the, that's what my clan is, the white wolf. And the Martin, Martin came out of there. Wabashishi. And the bear, the Makwa, he came out of there. And there's a few others that came out of there. But they haven't been feasted probably for 500 years. And they came there to have some traditional food, wild rice and berries that we, that the Creator made for us here. So we have to honor them. 
and we have to respect them. So this to explain how important that these drums are to us. And there's only one God in the world. And he gave the Thunderbirds the authority to bring down these drums. Why? To protect the most precious things that we have. What is it? What is the most precious thing? There's a big fight in the United States right now with the Dakota people. Why are they fighting? Yes. Nibi, water. Without that, how long do you think you'll live without water? Not too long, eh? Maybe a couple days. So that's why they're fighting for the cleanliness of the water. What else do we need? We need food. All the food that he put in the water, wild rice. The Creator made all this. All the strawberries, all the raspberries. All, every food source comes from the water and the Creator. We have that peace agreement. And tobacco. When I smoke the pipe, I have to go to court sometimes. So I have policies that I have to follow. They're not my policies. My policies are to sit here at the drum with the grandfather, smoke the, do the smoking of the pipe, talk to the directions. And the first direction that we deal with is the south right here. There's a spirit that's in that southern door that we have to talk to. So the governments and the courts says, well, you can't smoke here. You can't do this here. We have to go outside. That's, to me, is not right. That has to be changed. So the next doorway we come to when you're born, when you're a baby, is the eastern door. So when you come out of the world, you're coming from the east. The next door, when you grow up to be a teenager, the next doorway you're going to come to is the, the western door and the northern door. The northern door shows you that you've lived a full life. Your hair is becoming gray, white, pure. You know something in life, like that guy. He knows lots of things in life. You know? So that's our life that we're talking about. That's what they call minimum bamadzewin. The good life, what the Creator gave us to honor and respect all those resources. That's how much, that's what I can explain to you is a little bit of our, who we are and why we have these drums and these pipes that come from the Animi <coughs> Kika. Animi, that means speak. When an elder comes up to me and says, he says, let's speak our language. So our language comes from Animi Kika, the thunderbird. The one that you hear every spring. What do you hear? Boom, crash, boom, lightning. Those are the thunderbirds. Animi Ki. So they're the ones that have the authority from God that we have to respect them. They're the ones that gave us our language, Anishinaabe, Moen. And it's a lot to carry. It's a lot for my son and my daughter here. She's Taiwani, she's 10. It's a lot, and Dustin's daughter, Isabel, and our good friend, Dustin's wife, Elaine, that we are trying to keep our language alive. In my community, there's only 1% left of the speaking languages. 1%. But my wife here, she's fluent 100% because she comes from a community that they only speak Anishinaabe language. 
English is secondary. So I, we're very happy that she's here with us and growing, trying to get past all of the uh, things that we went through, the residential school sy syndrome and all those things. Just to give you an understanding of who we are, where we came from and where we are today and what we're trying to say to the government. Don't put our rights up here on a blackboard so you guys can play around with it. But recognize, entrench our rights in the Constitution as Anishinaabe people, the real people. It doesn't mean we're not excluding everybody, but Anishinaabe means we are the people who are fighting, whether you're yellow, Chinese, whether you're black, Makorea, whether you're Anishinaabe, the red people, and the white people, your races. That's what it means to us. Are you standing up for all those things that the Creator made? That's what it really means, Anishinaabe. We are the original peoples. So that's all I'm going to share with you is right now. I know I've got a lot of things to cover. But we're going to sing a welcoming song to open up this officially, if we have time. Hey, Scott, we got time? <laughs> okay, it takes a while to do these things, so we just can't come in here and say, well, we're going to do a drum song. The first song we did was... Okay. And we have, is it Evelyn? Aveline? Kweishiba. She's going to... Okay. okay, she's going to do a prayer, and then we're going to do the welcoming song. The welcoming song says in our language, Gije ije woka nini wok Gawa na bi yang Inde we ge Nikanik Hey ya hey ya hey And that means in the English language translated The grandfather drum sees everyone here and they want you to be happy and to, if there's room, we can all dance around here. But in this situation, we don't have room. So that you have an understanding that the Grandfather of Spirit sees everyone and loves everyone and wants you to come and dance and to be together in this conference. Miigwech, thank you. Thank you for your patience. It takes a while to do all this stuff. There's a lot of people here. I get nervous when I see a lot of people. Not used of this thing here. <laughs> um, Actually, I, I decided this morning, last night, about 2 o'clock, to come down. We're flooding at home. The water. First of all, I guess I must say, 
I welcome, I know all my, my people always welcome all people at our doors. And um, actually at my home, we end up having 5,400 people of all over the world. Yearly, we had about 3,000 to 2,500. So I got a, quite a bit of a good education from all, from the people that came to my house with my dad's house, William Commanda. I have to say, um, the thing that bothered me this morning was, and I welcome all the elders here, all the children, the future generation of the, of the future. Today's society also is very, you turn on the TV and it's very bad. It's part of our ancient prophecies said that it would happen like this. Right now, there's no more trees. We have lots of floods, a lot of mining, a lot of many things. And I don't quite understand uh, from archaeology, everybody's trying to explain to me to all the studies that we do here in this university. And um, so I'm still trying to understand because all the people that have came at my home I have learned so much from them. Sharing their problems in Europe with their European wars and also getting to know my North American people across North America and South America all the way through Turtle Island. I always put myself as a North American Algonquin. We have 82 dialects across North America we didn't make the borders and we didn't make the provinces and the states. So we cry each day because the four directions of our ancestors that we walk on are the language of the land. Si la langue de la terre, toute l'Amérique de Nord, ma famille, de toutes les, 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 les anciennes, les, les ancêtres, nous marche dessus aujourd'hui, Si nous marchons avec les autres, avec l'esprit. Les choses qui arrivent aujourd'hui, c'est très, très important pour garder tout ce qui arrive. Le Créateur a donné tout ce que nous avons avec la mer Terre pour vivre dans la mer Terre. L'eau, c'est beaucoup de problèmes. La mer Terre, beaucoup de problèmes. Les mines, Tout la gaz, c'est fait des problèmes de toutes les quatre directions de la mer Terre. The causes of all the problems of today and so much that we want to learn all different things from archaeology to anthropology to all these things. I think right now it's not very far to have to know what's going on. With internet and all these things, we're all in problem. The laws, yes, I thank. The laws that we have, we follow the lands, the, the life of the Mother Earth is our law. We are the Earth people. In the medicine wheel, it says we have the four directions, the four colors. And it's not to be criticism toward anybody because we thank every nationality. Today we have a big rainbow race. We have a lot of different nationalities in one human being, which causes a lot of racism with people. Beaucoup de races. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup d'enfants aujourd'hui, il y a trois, sept pays. We have French, English. We have a United Nations in my community. We have a big, and our grandfathers and our four ancestors never rejected us. If we reject one country, we have part of it in our own homes. If we, if we abuse the Mother Earth, we're abusing our future generation, and we're abusing the Mother Earth, we're, we're digging our graves. You cut more trees, you get incorporated, 
if man doesn't wake up, something will happen, and it's happening now. The wars are caused by the Mother Earth, the greed of money. We will not have a future generation. Il n'a pas rien en avance pour notre, notre génération. Si le temps peut faire une famille ensemble, we must make a family together. Ourselves, the language is our language. Without a language, it doesn't seem to bother anybody because our language is still recognized to be invisible. We are crowns of British, but we, but we still love any, everybody. If anyone was suffering, I don't care who it is, from prison I've been, from the streets, from all kind of people, if he's suffering, I'll help him. Without judgment, is a human being. My father was that type of man. He was known across the world, William Commander. I never got hit, I never got scolding. He had a way to speak to me, my dad. And that's the way our grandfathers were to all of us, my people. I called them my brothers, my sisters. I know today I'm mixing up the, your, your future day, but I thought maybe in the spirit this morning when I cried before the water at home, it's a paradise, my house. She knew in a grand lac, j'ai été à 5 heures un matin, puis j'ai mis du tabac, puis j'ai brought pour l'eau. There's not going to be no water pretty soon for nobody, want no life, no hurt, no life. No hair, no oxygen, we're looking at killing ourselves. C'est ça que je vois aujourd'hui. Ne peux prendre beaucoup d'éducation, j'étais déjà dans l'éducation. I look at special need children. Today's society, that's what I see. A lot of speckhead. Children that are being put as, as a, a special need. Children that are too active, they're sick to, to the society, and they're not, they're LT. Today they tell us our kids are sick. They're not. A lot of them feel not love. It's about love, this. And I wish everybody here before I start praying to help me do this prayer today, and I thank the drum. It's the heartbeat of the mother hurt. Quand t'as ton, ton cœur, il, il marche si, si le cœur de la mère terre. It's the hurt, mother cry. To all my people and to all of you, I ask you all to help me pray in the sacred young ones, the children, everything, and I meet gracious and help me with everything. Let's all, let's all think of what, what our future is. I'll do the prayer now. I'll, I'll say something in my language. we do question no go. Kakina ni no in. I shall do the prayer now. I'm not used to this here. And like it would be nice to have a smudge, but anyway, I ask for prayer now. Kichimi gwetch Jemini do no go. 
Mamani dishna kazwin was kune sekwe. Mamani do dem migizi. Mamani mishon meso do dem man minik animiki benesis. Kishkwana kwado kaboni shuak. Migwesh kakina binuigoni. Juen dagana gage gyatso ke mama eshish gage ginon awan kakina iga. Mi gwechem ni do kakina ki juen jigan ki gi mi jiang. Kakina e jojo a king ki gi mi jiang chi mada ziang. Mama kakina teg min jai mama mishki ki abjato yang chi chi Doraman, Ege Gorchi, Nim Yang, Chinam Yang, Chiked Yang, Mi Gretch Kakina, Mama Kisagi, and Mi Gretch Shaminido Kakina Wabagun, Mishki Kia Teg Kakina Kakina Gudge Madazu, and Ashish Kakina, and Nini Madazu, and Nikwe Abino Jisak Mi Gretch Onji Mitu Gugnogum. Kakina noch baban sawan. Mi gretch kin kizagi win kakina kin ki de bandan kakina gego nina winigi kendan on on a on in a chimitagazi on jemin do mama kakina we a chizag to seg to chigi kendan on watch. Mi gretch jeminido a shidre kakina nese win madazoin. Mama bene sis. Mama and Ningusak, the big Jesus, Jesus. Mama, Gana Quadok, was going to get a Miki Kakina Gago at Tech. Mama Kakina Nibi Mothers and Winnie Queer Yard, a Peter Yawad, Baby and Son, I should Nibi Kakina Mishkiki at Tech, Vinjai, Mamma Kakina Nodgo Gigo on the Wag. I should Massama know, I should be in Torch. Nibi Kakina Gego Mama Yaki Tish Kudad at Teg Onji Kakina Wiak Jimada Ziang Onajama Migret Shamini Donji Mama Kinawa Koka Misagna Nodna Nakag Bogadana Mishnang Nigwede Yang Mama Mishom Sagashit Oni Nechi Mose Yang Onajama Oni Nechi Zagi Ker a pitch me talk as a young mama kakina noja we yag. Bogadanamish non kakina nish nabeg non gum kakina ni mau in the men. Me gretch kakina gago. Ye mama kishpin gago. When he came on ki kakina gigi canned on. I thank my creator, our creator. For all the love that he has sent to us with the Mother Earth, without the Mother Earth, with all the four-legged, with all the flowers, the medicines, with the four-legged animals, the trees that give us oxygen and life, I thank him for all the love that he gave us. The grandfathers that we use, everything, the fruit, the vegetables, in all the four directions. I thank the Creator for all the water life that woman carries to have a baby even, and all the life that's in the water with the, with the medicines, all kinds of fish, the eels, the snake that cleans the, the, the big oceans, everything unimaginable that we've received from love from the Creator. The big whale, big, all the sacredness, the polar bears, our bears, here in our place. All the wind, the, the, the stars, the sky, the moon, the sun, our ancestors, our brothers, our sisters, the clouds, the eagles, the feathers, the goose, all what we eat here too and what we use to do ceremony. My creator, we thank you. 
Thank you for that special great fire that descended here for all of us. Thank you for all that's in our hearts and thank you for if we have forgotten something, we ask that forgiveness. Aujourd'hui, nous merci tout le Créateur pour toute la vie qu'il a donné à nous autres. Tout de la mer terre, tout pour manger nous là, les animaux, les fleurs, la, les médecins, les arbres, tout. Que c'est que nous oublions quelque chose, nous dit merci. Il craint tout le Créateur. Oui, aussi la, la l'eau, les lacs, le grand lac, tout ce qu'il a donné, les poissons, tout pour manger. Nous dit merci à lui aussi, les médecins dans, dans l'eau. Le feu qu'il a descendu pour nous autres, en haut, la lune, le soleil, toutes les, les étoiles. Si des frères de nous autres ici nous parlent avec tout, avec le Créateur, nous disons merci avec ça. With all this, I thank the Creator for all everything, with all our relation, our spirit, we can't do it. We can't do nothing without the spirit. Can't talk with the mind. You only can talk with the spirit. Then you can talk. I regret you all for having me and taking our overtime on you. I'm sorry if I heard, but the spirit, you can't stop spirit when he goes out you to speak to you. Time is unlimited for our people. We are the earth people in the medicine wheel. And there are many, the story of the medicine people of, the, of Mother Earth, this is our job. Today, it's our turn to give our prophecy to you because it's needed. It's a very tr critical time. Miigwech to everybody, and I love you all. And maybe someday we'll all have a big world gathering, once again in my home or somewhere. Miigwech, thank you. Merci. Miigwech there, Evelyn. Okay, we're going to open up this uh, with the uh, welcoming song. Some questions you might have. Why do you only see men sitting at the drum and singing? And my wife here, she was singing the first song. The first song was the pipe song. And it says we're pointing the stem of the pipe to the Thunderbirds and the Creator. That's what that song says, the first song. And my wife sang there with a hand drum. A lot of people ask us, well, how come there's little girls not sitting at the drum? How come? Well, there's very strict teachings here. Women carry the gift of life to give babies. The Creator gave us these drums and the men responsibilities because we are weak. We don't have the ability to give babies to life, to walk on this earth. So the Creator says, I'm going to equal that power for the men. When you smoke your pipe, as I did this morning and always, we are going to be equal to the woman so that we have equal rights. So she's teaching my daughter here and the young girls that when she sings behind, she'll have her hand drum. And you'll see my wife, she wears a skirt. They're not allowed to sit at the drum because when the spirit comes out, they will be fighting that spirit with the woman, with the man. So we have that problem today where the girls want to, I want to come and sing there. And we say, no. Elder said, no. 
The Creator says no. Why? Because we don't want that spirit to kill that little girl. That's teachings. Very important teachings. You don't, We have that all over our communities. Wow, well, I'm a girl. I want to come and sing on the drum. No, the Creator says, because that spirit is stronger than anybody. So, I just wanted to share that. And also, one more thing. When the, the man that introduced me to the grandmother drum, his name was Jim Winnego. He was in a battle in Winnipeg, and he went up seven flights of stairs in the hospital because somebody was trying to kill him, another spirit. And the crater came into the room at the window. He says, I'm coming in. I'm coming in to talk to you. So the old man looked at him. Come on in then. So the spirit went in. Says, you look like Jesus. He says, no, I'm not him. I'm Nanabush. But I want to come tell you, I made this world on this side with God. And he says, I hear everybody calling this Mother Earth. I hear everybody calling this place I made Turtle Island. He says, but you, you talk about something different. You talk about the Bear Island, which means all of the Southern America, all of the Northern America. He says, I love all my people, he says, but I did not call that what people are calling that. I call it Bear Island, he says, in our language, Makwa Menising. Why? Because I made it, he says, and that's what I call it. So he gave the elders a song after he asked, the Creator asked all the animals to go around the whole earth on this side. And the only one that made it across and all around, he climbed up trees, he climbed up rocks, big mountains, he fell down, and he made the whole island. He made it right around, and he came back and he talked to the Creator. He says, yes, that's big enough for all the Anishinaabe people. Not just me, but everyone here that you see in this room. He says, so from now on, he says, I want you to go out and tell all the people to call it Bear Island because that's what I named it, because that bear walked all over the island. And that's what the song says. There's a song that he gave with that. He said, the bear walked all over the earth playing and having fun. And he came back and he says, now you will leave this hospital and you will go out and tell the people that this side of the world is called Bear Island, Makwam and Insing. That's what I wanted to share. I want to thank our elder for saying those kind words. And I see Ramola over there. Ramola, she called me up and, well, she Facebooked me. <laughs> That's how we all communicate today. She says, Barry, I want you to come down and sing, sing some songs and talk a little bit. So I want to really thank her. And she is a very hard-working woman for the people. She worked with William Commando for a long time. And just want to thank her, Ramoa. Awesome. Are you having fun? All right, so are we. Now we're going to sing this song and then we can get on with it. The welcoming song. Miigwech.
Well, thank you for taking all this time. Merci pour avoir pris tout ce temps pour euh, accueillir tout le monde ici. Nous aurons aussi d'autres euh, personnes de différents. Euh, vous aurez beaucoup de bienvenus ce matin. Um, you will have a lot of welcoming from different people that I will be just introducing. And this today, uh, I'll be translating myself. Je vais faire ma propre traduction aujourd'hui. Um, I might uh, acknowledge that we have some people in the room, some I will present uh, officially. Um, je, vais, je voudrais porter attention qu'on a certaines personnes dans la salle. Entre autres, nous avons uh, Monsieur Douglas Cardinal, who is an indigenous architect, sitting here. Monsieur Douglas Cardinal, um, an architect autochtone. <laughs> Merci. Thank you. And uh, I think I will uh, invite Monsieur Professor Georges Siwi, oui, from the University of Ottawa, who will. Merci beaucoup. <coughs> Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Kichimigwach. I thought I was alone here. I didn't see. The, I don't notice there are so many people. Really glad to see you all. I'll speak mostly in English. Someone just already said, uh, as a joke, a Cree friend from Saskatchewan. He said, and now I would like to speak in my own language, but unfortunately, I don't have it. It was taken away from me. <laughs> That's not my case, though. I was born without speaking. Our language was, was gone before I was born. My name is George Siwi. Siwi means rising sun in our language. I am from the Huron or Wandat nation. Most of you, many of you know us by the name Huron. And our real name is Wandat. I, you, I, you, I was the uh, director of the Aboriginal Studies program for the first seven years. I just retired from the university this past December. I'm not inactive. I just finished writing in another book. <laughs> That's all I know how to do. <laughs> I'm very thrilled to be here in this especially to see and hear my old friend, Evelyn Commanda, the daughter of my very great friend, Chief, and my uh, uncle, William Commanda, who left us in 2000, 2001, 2011, on August 3rd. I'm also very thrilled to see Romola, Romola, the great helper and a great friend of all of our people, especially Chief William Commander. Douglas Cardinal, great to see you again, Douglas, thank you. The singers, the great words, the beautiful words we, we heard from Barry Sarazin. I can't pronounce your name in Algonquin, I'm sorry. And the other singers, Larry McDermott, great to see you, Larry. Uh, I, uh, We had many good times with Elder William Commander when he was living. And I am going to tell you a little bit about how <clears throat> one, one great Algonquin I just named, Elder William Commander, how he helped, <clears throat> helped us create and sustain the Aboriginal Studies Program at the University of Ottawa. We owe the existence of this program to the Algonquin Nation, of course. We are on their territory. The university exists and lives and thrives on the territory of the Algonquin people, especially of the uh, nation of Kitigan Zibi. Chief and Elder William Commander left us and he was 96 years old. 
and he was and he came to my classes every time I asked him he came and spoke to my students my students of course come from all corners of the earth especially when my classes are in English a little bit less when my classes are in French but in English they come from the world over and the uh, my students expressed so much joy, so much wonderment, so much admiration when they heard the words of Elder William Commanda. He used to speak to them in this, these words, I'm going to try to repeat the essence of what he used to say to us. He said, I was, I was very uh, much in pain for what your people, meaning the white people, the European people, did to my nation, to my people, to all Aboriginal nations, to all Indian, I'm still using the word Indian, Amerindian, if you wish, people. And I used to be so much in pain that my health was threatened, I was being the victim of my own hate, he said to my students, I used to hate your people, the white people, and it was killing me. And one day I began to go to my elders, he said, and they told me, William, your hate is going to kill you. He said I was about 40 or 45 years old at the time and he lived to be about 50 years more which is going to be the rest of my short story to you. And he said I began discovering the, the path of my ancestors which is all about love, acceptance. The Algonquin people are a very light-hearted people. I say that from my perspective as a Huron. The Huron people are farmers, my people are farmers. And they're traders. And they have a heavier way of feeling. We are a heavy-hearted people. We, we used to be the greatest warriors and we used to cultivate and maintain the friendship of the Ojibwe's, the Algonquin, the Anishinaabe, because they kept us in, on the path of sweetness, love. This is the way we used to live with them. We have lived with them for many, many centuries before the Europeans ever came here. We cultivated their friendship and we had a symbiotic way of living together. We lived together. We cultivated friendship for many, many, many generations. And so Chief William Commander said, I used to be such a racist and then I discovered the path of my ancestors which is all about love mutual understanding, mutual acceptance. And he used to say to my students, now, 50 years after, I'm still, still here. And he was over 90 years old. He came to my classes until he was 94 years old with Romola. Romola always made sure that everything was okay. And she was, she is a co-founder of our program, a very important person for the Aboriginal studies. Thank you, Romola, and the And witch. And he said to my students, after my life of work with my people, with all peoples of the earth, of the world, as it was mentioned, Chief William Commander was famous the world over. He was like our Dalai Lama. And he said, I love you, he said to my students, every time, I love you. You are my people. 
There is no difference, no distance between all of us, between you and me. And my students used to say to me some many times, I feel so honored, I feel so privileged to be in the presence of such a man and to hear his story and to hear him say that he loves me, he loves us. We are a family. He was part of my education since I was very young. He used to come to my reserve, the Huron village. It's now called another name, it's called Wandake. He used to come and he used to work with our elders, especially chief, our traditional chief, Jules Siwi, a distant relative of mine. And we used to be allowed to sit and to listen to them but they used to say to us, don't speak, don't interfere, just listen. Listen to Chief Commander, especially. So that's how I came to call him Chief. But as he grew older, and he was a very close friend of my mother, especially my mother, a great woman leader who achieved her doctoral degree when she was 68 years old. And he, he was his brother, her brother, so that's how I came to call him also my uncle, because he was my mother's brother. I won't take too much more of your time. I just wanted to tell you some about a great, great Algonquin spiritual leader and the way that they practice their spirituality. It's all about love, openness. If he were here today, he would say things that I just said, but he would say those same things as his daughter just said, just did for us in English, in Anishinaabe, and in French. And of course, he became Dr. William Commander in time. The university granted him an honorary degree, and he's, he's Dr. William Commander. So I, um, I just saw myself here, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm really here with you. <laughs> Uh, I just would like to say a few words, just uh, the final words about how I was accepted, how I was welcomed with my classes. I think I took my Aboriginal studies classes 14, 14 times to the reserve of Maniwaki or Kitiganzibi and to the reserve of Akwasasne, the Mohawk reserve just close to Cornwall. Every time, especially the first years, we didn't have any money. The program did not have any money. I showed up to Maniwaki at the door and in the house of Evelyn Kamanda and her husband Thomas Dewashi. And they had food for us. They didn't care how many people we were. They always fed us, my whole class, maybe 30, 40, 50 students. The ones that could come along, I mean, many of them could not come along. And they always did that with a great, great generosity, which is so proper to the Algonquin. A very generous per a people in, our, uh, in the eyes of my nation, a people of great generosity, pure-hearted people, people who practice the greatest and the most ancient form and the truest form of democracy because they have lived in very close contact with the earth, the mother earth, for such a long time that they respect everything that lives on mother earth and everyone that comes to see them, that, that has any contact with them. I'm going to just repeat what my elder used to say to us, I love you very much, all of you. If I could, if we were in a big, great circle, I would like to hug every one of you. I love you very much. In the name of my nation and in the name of the Algonquin people. Kichimigwacha.